Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Diamond. Today, well, I have a product review for you. That, that's right. Zincor sent me their new electric wine decanter. Uh, it's the model D119. And um, they sent me something a while back asking if I'd be willing to review their previous model, the 117. And I said, sure. And then they sent me something saying, actually, we received some feedback. We want to make it better and then send you that one instead. Okay, so they went ahead and sent it to me. Uh, let's take a look at it. I did tell them in advance though, that just because they're sending this to me does not mean it's gonna get a good review, um, which is probably why they wanted to send me the one that had the first round of feedback associated with it. But let's take a look to see what's inside this package. That's right, a waiter's frame can be used to open packages too. All right, so let's take a look at what's in here. So just right here and then, all right, so this is kind of what you see when you open the package. Yeah, this is really tight. Uh, I'm gonna actually have to open this on the sides as well. I never said I was graceful at unboxing. I just said I would do it. Um, now, with that being said, this is already way larger than I thought it would be. I thought it would have like some padding underneath it. Uh, no, this this unit is, I mean, this is, this is pretty big. That's a pretty big box right here. Move this out of the way, and let's take a look at what I have. So, as you can see, Zincor logo, and let's open it up. That's a nice kind of tight fit on that. Uh, first of all, immediately out of the box, I get the instruction manual. Thank you. I hate having to dig for instruction manuals. Uh, there's also a notice of FCC conformity, um, basically stating that uh, it's not gonna cause electrical interference whenever it's being used. A nice foam pad on top and kind of remove that. I have a nice bag, it looks like a carrying bag for this. And on the bottom is some foam, which is nice because that just means it's extra padding when being transported. This is a cylinder, I don't know what's in it. Let's take a look. This, wow. This was, not the type of packaging I was expecting. So, uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna set this right here, put the Zincor logo. Uh, yeah, this was not what I was expecting at all. Uh, to be honest, I thought I was gonna get something in a box and maybe have some padding on the inside, had some little bit of padding on the outside, nothing to the fit and finish that I'm getting right here on the box. But this is way more than I thought I was going to be getting. I thought they were just gonna be sending me a decanter. Let's take a look. So this has a nice little magnetic snap to keep it close. This is, this is really nice. <laughs> this is a nice finish. I mean, this is solid. You're not gonna drop this. And this is not a flip. Can it pull out? This is pull out. And this is what you get on the inside. So I'm gonna set this right here. Wow, this looks, way different than the previous model too. The previous model just had like smooth glass contouring. This is, this is quite different. Let's take this padding off and get a closer look at it. All right, so already I'm, I'm quite happy about this even more because uh, this has a nice little strap to keep this strapped in. So that way if you get rid of this padding, uh, it should still stay in place when it's being transported. And it looks like there is something underneath. What is that? Charging cable, which makes sense because this is electric. Yeah, uh, yeah. let's get this thing out and take a look at it. Okay, so I will say that when it comes to the snap, the snap does a good job securing it, but when you lift it up, be careful and you're not tilting it because this could come out fairly easily. So this is uh, something you need to be a little bit aware of when you're using it. Uh, this should just go right on top. And that is the decanter. You'll notice it is not a not a decanter for a full size bottle of wine. So in my conversation with, with Zincor, they had mentioned that this was not necessarily designed for a full bottle of wine. It was designed so that way you could open a bottle of wine, pour in what is two standard pours, because the max fill line is 300 milliliters, and, uh, and then it aerates it in about 15 to 30 seconds. You can also use it for spirits, you can use it for tequila, rum, whiskey. So, I mean, there's lots of different things you can aerate with it, but it, it does it so fast that you, you don't need to sit there and put the whole bottle in and wait a while. 
it just does it really quickly. Or at least that's what I've been told. So, so here's what I'm going to do. I need to charge this thing. So it uses a USB-C 2 to USB-C 3.2, which is a Type-C charger. Uh, just plugs in right to the side here. And yeah, so I can actually go charge this at my desk for a while. Let me flip through the user manual real fast before I do that and just see if there's anything to note. All right, so in terms of special things to note, uh, do not fill up below the min fill line or do not fill it above the max fill line because it might cause problems. Also, it comes with presets. So you can kind of just go through and it cycles 15, 30, one minute, a minute, 30, or two minutes. Or you can kind of program your own time into there if, if you want to do something for a little bit longer. With all this being considered though, it doesn't give any information as to what a 30 second aeration equates to in terms of a standard decanting. But luckily this is wine on the dime and I always have wine. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little experiment with it. Uh, I'm going to set out my red wine decanter. I'm going to let it sit for, for four hours. We'll do four hours. So it'll sit for four hours with half a bottle of wine. I'm going to take the other half bottle of wine after four hours, pour it into here, run it through for 30 seconds and see where it compares. Is it, is it around the, is it around the same mark or is it need more aeration? And then I can just aerate it again and try to see if I can get the same result. So that's how I'm going to try out this thing. In the meantime, let me go get it charged and I will be back later. All right. So it's been four hours since I poured half of this bottle into here and uh, vacuum sealed it. So I'm interested to see just letting this sit here and breathe and then putting this through the process now that it's charged, it took about two hours to charge. I'm, I'm interested to see how these two things compare. So I guess first step is I need to see where the fill line is on this because there is a max fill line. Okay. Come on. There we go. All right. So let's get this into here. Okay, max fill line. So I'm not at the max fill line. It's, it goes up to 300 milliliters, but I poured this half and half and it would go over if I did that. So I'm just gonna leave that there. Now, let me move this out of the way. You can turn it on. So that's it going on and then uh, there's different settings, so I'm going to say this recommends for 30 seconds on a red wine, so I'm just going to do 30 seconds and see what happens. That's my first. So that's what it looks like whenever it's going, so it's definitely putting bubbles through and aerating that wine. Look at that. And other than the bubbles, this is pretty much silent. Like you just heard the bubbles going, you didn't hear a motor, you didn't hear anything. So that is, <laughs> that's really, that's, that's it? That's supposed to be aerated red wine. Okay, so I guess let me start before I do anything this, let me start with this and taste it. Come on, pour out. Just doing a little bit here. So in terms of the nose, I mean, it, it does, I'm not gonna review the wine because I've already reviewed this one, but it is, it is more open than if you had just poured the wine straight into the glass. Swirling it around a little bit doesn't really help it, doesn't really open it up more. But going from medium nose to medium plus after four hours is a nice plus. Uh, I am getting a lot of the primary elements and I'm getting a lot of secondary. I'm getting more secondary after decanting it four hours than I did whenever I did the standard review process. So as it has opened up the wine a lot already for four hours. So let me taste it. That is interesting because on the palate, it's actually dulled the primary fruit a lot. So opening it up, pouring it straight into the glass, you get more primary elements. This is pulled those down. The secondary is matching it, but it's also extremely acid first. So I'm, I'm wondering if, if maybe four hours was too long for this wine, but you know what? I don't, I don't know how long that cans for, so I'll be able to at least compare it to what a, a four hour wine there is. Let me finish this off real fast. All right, so the cleansing my palate. Hopefully you've got the same sample. The color looks the same in it um, on the nose. Okay, so we're, we're going about a medium 
to medium plus. I still have to get my nose close to the rim, but I don't have to touch it like I do when just opening this wine straight. So at least that helps. So it has opened up a little bit. Same thing as before. I'm getting more of the secondary on this. Uh, I'm still getting a good amount of primary notes on it, but let's see what it does whenever we take a look at it from the palette. Okay, so if I had to put a time rating on this, I would probably say that this is probably closer to like a a two hour decanting because I'm still this the tannins on this are significantly softer than what I'm getting here they're they're the flavor there's a little bit more primary here uh, the secondary is coming out of it the alcohol is a little bit more noticeable but I can still tell that it's not like a straight pour from the bottle it has opened up so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this for another 30 seconds and see if that kind of brings it in line with this. All right, it's done. Let's take a look at it. A little, a little bit of the alcohol is blown off. Still smells pretty open. Okay, so what I'm going to say with this is for this aerator, using something that is a medium going into a medium plus bodied wine. They now taste aligned. So what I'm going to say is about a minute of aeration on this thing is the equivalent of four hours of aeration in a decanter. So I'm going to go one more time. I'm going to add a minute to this thing and I want to see what it does. Yeah, the tannins were significantly softer. They, they really did match. So I'm interested to see what an extra minute will do. Will that really kind of give it a more open and, and developing type of body and aroma and palette. So I'm interested to see how this works out. I've actually, this is actually a pretty cool thing so far. Okay, so last taste test for the Zincor. Let's take a look at it. A little bit more of the alcohol is blown off. It, it, it's not all gonna go with this wine unless you really go a long time with it. It's 14 and percent ABV, but it's, it's still there. That secondary is actually brightened up. So before it was, it was noticeable I was getting it, but now I'm actually like, it's actually wanting to be almost like its own primary element within this wine. That's a soft wine. It still has the acid. It still has opened up. It still has a similar note where the primary is a little bit more muted, just like the open decanting that secondary has really developed. I am getting a little bit more of an earthiness and a little bit of a black pepper. Um, I'm pretty sure that's just because it's allowing more of those aromatics to be released. The tannins are significantly softer, as I mentioned. So now what I would say is after two minutes, if you are someone who does not like high tannin red wines, but you like high acid red wines that have a good amount of flavor to them, then this has really opened this up. This, this bottle is $13. And if I was to give this to somebody right now, they'd probably think it was two to three times that, that price. With all of that being said, let's take a look at how this rates. Now, here's the deal. I can't use Blick, because balance, length, intensity, and complexity don't really apply to a product. So instead, I'm gonna use Deem. Design, effectiveness, ease of use, and maintenance. So let's take a look at this. All right, so from a design perspective, I love the way this thing looks. The craft is nice. It separates easily from the base. It comes back on easily to the base. The base itself is very sleek. There's nothing that catches. The buttons are easy to use. You put the charging cable in, pull it out. So including charging cable, it is three pieces. It also comes with a very stylish storage container that you can use as a carrying container as well. So you just put it in, 
you take it wherever you need to go, or if you need to store it, keep it dust free or away from kids that like to go through things and accidentally break your wine glasses and, and wineware or cats that just want to destroy everything in your house. So that's very nice. Now, I will say the only thing that I'm gonna give this a knock for, and, and this is why I'm gonna give half a point for design, is I really wish I could put a full bottle of wine in here. Now, with that being said, that is a fairly picky reason for a specific use case. If I'm at home and I'm going to be enjoying a couple of glasses of wine for myself, I, I fill it up to the max, I run it for a minute, two minutes, depending on how much I want it aerated, I'll let it aerate, I'll enjoy that wine, and I'm good. But if I have a group of people, say I'm entertaining, and I want everybody to have a glass of that wine at the same time, I'm going to have to fill it to the max, aerate it, pour it for certain people, do it again, pour it for certain people, do it again, pour it for the last person. So I, I have to figure out more logistics when I can't put a full bottle of wine into this. So that is the only reason I'm gonna give design half a point. In terms of engineering, I really like this because this could have been one of those things where this sounds like a freight train, like a weed whacker. I mean, who knows? Instead, you just hear very slight bubbling. So it's very quiet for what I expected. I actually expected to hear some sort of motor or like an air compressor or something. And all you hear is the gentle bubbling of the wine inside the carafe when it's running. When it's not running, it's silent. When I'm charging it, it actually has a red light to show that it's not at full charge. And whenever it's at a full charge, it shows the white light. And then it's done. It doesn't make any noise. It doesn't distract from anything going on. So that's also very nice. So from an engineering perspective, I'm gonna give you a full point. In terms of ease of use, you pour the wine in above a certain amount, below a certain amount. You hit that and you, you just let it go. I mean, you hit the button and it works. It's very, very easy. I don't see how anyone could, could not use this device. The only way it's not gonna work is if it's not charged. And at that point, it's not turning on. So, I mean, this is very easy to use, full point there. Finally, in terms of maintenance, this thing is very easy. So, if this gets dirty, you just wipe it down, make sure it's clean. This does not get wet whatsoever, so don't do that, you'll ruin it. But you just put the cable away, you put this away, just wipe it down if it's dirty which it doesn't look like it gets dirty easily unless you're a goof and you spill it, which I wouldn't put that past me. This is hand wash. It's not dishwasher safe, but it's not hard to clean a decanter. I mean, there's plenty of ways of doing it very quickly. So a little bit of soapy water in there, clean it out. You can also use decanting beads. You can use a brush design for decanters, all sorts of stuff. So you just clean it like you would your standard decanter and it's good to go. Once it's dry, put it all in its case, put it away or if you're gonna be using it often, leave it out. I still don't know if I would totally do that though because then you could get particulates and stuff in the decanter and it's sometimes pain to have to rinse it out and do that and if you don't remember that, you might end up with cat hair in it like my do from time to time. So what I would recommend is you still clean it and put it away. However, with that being said, maintenance, full point, super easy to use. So in the end for the score, I'm gonna give this, <laughs> this Zincor electric wine aerator a very good. I really like this. I, I like the design, I like the ease of use, I like how easy it is to clean. The only thing that's preventing this product from being great is I can't put a full bottle of wine into it. If I could put a full bottle of wine into this and aerate it in a few minutes and just let everyone else enjoy it with me at the same time, then that would be awesome. Now with that being said, I'm also not too picky because I'm mostly a hermit and the only people who are gonna be drinking wine in my house most of the time are my wife and I. But when I do host events, I think it'd be really cool if I could bust this out and open the container and pour in the wine and hit a few buttons and watch, let people watch it aerate and stuff. That's, it's, it gives it a little bit of a show. It's, it's kind of fun. It's not just sitting there like this thing, this boring thing. Zincor, it's a pretty cool product. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you tried the Zincor Electric Wine Aerator and Decanter? I'd be interested to know if you have. Leave a comment below, and I'll see you all again soon with another product review or wine review from Wine on the Dime.